and welcome to Myth Monsters. My name is Erin and I'll be your host for these little snack bite-sized podcasts on folklore and mythical monsters from around the world. These podcasts focus on the actual cryptids, folklore and mythic monsters from global mythology, rather than focusing on the full stories of heroes and their big adventures. I'll also be dropping in some references that they have to recent culture, and where you can see these represented in modern day content, so that you can learn more and get as obsessed as I am about these absolute legends of the mythological world. Whilst you're listening to this episode today, on release day that is, I'm in Disneyland Paris, living it up with the mouse, and having a very spooky time at their Halloween festival. So, I hope you're jealous. I'm recording this before I go and I'm honestly extremely excited. I'm literally due to go any minute now. Anyway, before I leave you, let's talk about monsters. This week, we're not heading anywhere specific for this one, but to religious folklore as a whole. Yes, this week, we are looking at Islamic folklore and the horrifying demon within it, the Ifrit. So what is an Ifrit? These are generally described as demons from Islamic folklore, who are associated with the underworld and are immensely powerful, wise, sly and malicious. There are very few descriptions of them, but the most common is a monster made of fire, ash and smoke that can make themselves any size with large smoky wings. They can be both male or female, however, are more commonly found to be male, and are sometimes depicted with thorny hands, flaming eyes, or seven heads with multiple deformities. Ifrit are sometimes known as a class of creatures called jinn, which I've covered on the show before a few years back. These are the Islamic genies in English, and are not as well known for delivering wishes to mortals from their itty bitty living space as jinn are. However, they do still have that same ability to do so. They are classified as demons and undead or chthonic spirits, and mostly live in the Islamic underworld, or Jahannam. However, they can also be found above the ground in ruins, abandoned temples or graveyards. They tend to stick around here, as it's believed that if you were murdered, an ifrit would be summoned and would wander around until the Day of Judgement, or the End of Days. Only these types of violent deaths would summon an ifrit, normal deaths would not. However, the violent ifrit could take revenge on your murderer for you, scare other people just for funsies, or even just murder the living for fun. It's also worth noting that you could stop this transformation by driving an unused nail into the dead person's blood. Growth. They are usually depicted as evil, wicked creatures, however they are not fundamentally evil. They sometimes can even do God's will, but are likely to interpret this in a ruthless way, such as enacting revenge by killing the other, for instance. Their main power, though, was possession. They could possess both the living and the dead, and they would gain powers from the Ifrit, such as super strength, stamina and bravery, but in return, the Ifrit would drive the person insane. You could, however, control an Ifrit with a powerful magic ring. As you can imagine, though, they are quite hard to get a hold of, and we have no record of them really existing. Ifrits lived in a structured society in their own little bubbles, which matched ancient Arab tribal lines, and had kings, tribes and clans. They would generally marry each other, but could also marry humans and could procreate with both. However, they had nasty tempers and, realistically, embodied flame, so I'm not sure how much you'd want to be married to one, to be honest. But let's talk about getting rid of them, shall we? Ordinary weapons and forces have no power over Ifrit at all, but they are susceptible to magic, which humans can use to kill them or to capture and enslave them for their usage. They were able to be compelled by a sorcerer if they were summoned, but they would usually look for a cheap way out. 
Now, let's move on over to etymology. The word ifrit is, of course, Arabic. However, the meaning of it is contested amongst scholars, with one set believing it means to rub with dust or to roll in dust, and others believing it means to create. There are also those who believe it is more a defining characteristic in demons, used to describe sly, malicious, wicked and cunning beings. Eventually though, through folklore, the term was developed into a designation of demon and they were put to beings like shayatins or demons, who prey on women, or as spirits of the dead. If you want to know more about shayatins, I covered them not too long ago in their own episode. But interestingly, in Turkish, the term ifrit means demon of the underworld, which is pretty exact. And in Islamic texts, the word is always linked to the jinn, but because the jinn are also very vague in terms of description and being mentioned within text, we assume that there is a much bigger connection here. But for the history, we are going straight to the Quran, the holy text of the Islamic faith. Now, of course, this has no writer or date attached to it, but we do believe that it was written in around 610 to 632 BC, which does make it really really old. In the Quran, they are mentioned in the 27th chapter, where an ifrit offers to carry the throne of Bilquis, Queen of Sheba, to King Solomon. And he actually says the following, I will bring it to you before you rise from your place, and verily, I am indeed strong and trustworthy for such work. The task in the end was not given to him, but to someone with knowledge of the scripture. In one of the hadiths around Muhammad, an ifrit also makes an appearance, and appears as an ifrit amongst a load of jinn. He disrupts Muhammad's prayers and threatens him with his fiery presence, and Muhammad then is taught a prayer by the archangel Gabriel to defeat him. The purpose of this story is to explain that God sent the ifrit so that Gabriel could teach Muhammad and the rest of the Muslim community to overcome their fear of demons in the night. Lastly, in the story of Prophet Job, where he is tested by Iblis, the leader of all demons, he asks God to test him. So Iblis summons his most powerful demons, including Shayatin and Ifrit, where they turn into storms and whirlwinds of fire to destroy Job's work. My favourite Ifrit story is actually a Persian one from 1150 AD called Maham the Wayfarer. In this story, Mahan travels to a demon-infested desert where he's presented with a horse by one of these demons. And then it rides off with him and becomes a seven-headed monster. Mahan runs and finds shelter in an oasis owned by an old man, and eventually the old man likes him enough to let him inherit his estate and marry a beautiful woman. However, as the old man leaves for the wedding, he warns Mahan that he must not descend from the perch he is on until the old man is back. After that, the house, garden and wife will belong to him. The beautiful girl enters the room, and she has the face of a peri, which is a fairy from Persian folklore, and Mahan is instantly overwhelmed by lust and passion, and ignores the old man's warning. Mahan takes a hold of the girl, and suddenly, she turns into an ifrit. The demon explains that she truly was a fairy, but turned into a demon because of Mahan's uncontrollable lust and this is God's punishment. The Ifrit then tells him that he now must tear Mahan apart, because if he didn't, the monster would be no true demon. As well as that, the Ifrit is super embarrassed that he had to show up as a fairy. But just as Mahan's about to die, a rooster squawks, and everything demonic vanishes from sight in the light of the morning, proper saving his skin. These aren't the only stories around Ifrit either. There are two from 1001 Nights, the Arabic legendary stories that I won't go into detail on, 
but they are still really prevalent within Islamic culture and belief. And I think they're a really great monster as a religious hellion too. The belief in jinns and ifrit is believed to have originally come from ancient Egypt and the idea of ka, which was that the soul came in segmented parts. The part of that person's soul that was evil, brought out by the murder of them, would then develop into an ifrit in the graveyard after burial. Now, of course, with mythical comparisons, we've kind of mentioned them both. Jinns are their closest mythical monster sibling, being the more benevolent version of them and where Aladdin's genie derived from. If you were to compare these two in Disney terms, genie is a jinn and Jafar at the end is an ifrit, if that makes it any easier to contextualise or personify and to understand, I suppose. Shayatin is more of an umbrella term for demon in Islamic folklore, which jinn and ifrits are technically classed as. But again, if you want to know more about them in more detail, check out their more specific episodes that I've done. I also mentioned the Perry Fairy earlier in that story, and we also have an episode on them if you're interested in learning more. They're a really interesting one that fits alongside Islamic folklore, but mostly within the Persian folklore and mythology space. But now, let's move on to modern media. There's a whole load of media for ifrits, but also for generic jinns and genies. So I've popped all of these in to fill this out. In art, there is a lot of portrait art, but unfortunately, with the nature of drawings from holy books and holy scrolls, they're not named and they don't have artists attached to them. So it's really lame, but you're gonna have to look them up on Google, and that sucks, but it's the best way to look this up. Honestly, even cooler though is the independent art this week, especially that out of video games featuring Ifrits. I'd really recommend having a look at them, they are really cool. In movies, we have Aladdin, Wish Dragon, Aladdin and the Return of Jafar, Clash of the Titans, Kazam, My Darling Genie, Fantasia, Jin, The Curse of Sleeping Beauty, The Field Guide to Evil, Wishmaster, When Evil Calls, and Super Fantagenio. For TV, we have True Blood, Genius Genie, Pixel Pinky, Creep Show, Big Wolf on Campus, The Genie from Down Under, Rocco's Modern Life, The Real Ghostbusters, My Little Pony, American Gods, Carmen Rider Deno, Miraculous Ladybug, Shazan, The Fairly Odd Parents, Legacies, Special Unit 2, Once Upon a Time, I Dream of Genie, Danny Phantom, Supernatural, The Twilight Zone, Aladdin the Series, Shimmer and Shine, Charmed, The Magicians, Ultraman 80, Wizards of Waverly Place, Yogi's Gang, The Smurfs, and Heathcliff and the Cadillac Cats. And in video games, we have ones such as Final Fantasy, Terraria, World of Warcraft, Sonic and the Secret Rings, Pokemon, Rise of Legends, Monster Rancher 2, The Secret World, Guild Wars, Dragon's Crown, Cuphead, Ape Escape, Destiny, Arcana, Extra Power, Golden Sun, Adventure Quest Worlds, Shantae, The Sims, Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception, Age of Wonders, Quest for Glory 2, Might and Magic, King's Quest, and Beyond Oasis. My book recommendation this week are either two of The Encyclopedia of Eastern Mythology, Legends of the East by Rachel Storm, for a great summary of Arabic folklore stories, or The World of Angels and Demons, What Does Islam Say?, by Said Shah for some really specific demonology studies within Islam. I recommended these two for the Jinn episode. I'd really recommend having a look. It's got all of the favourites in there, including Shayatin, Jinn and Ifrits. And I think Perry's too. But now it's time for Do I think they existed? Do I think demons exist? Not entirely sure, if I'm completely honest. 
I did say in my gin episode, which was a long time ago and could definitely do with a slight rewrite now I've re-listened, it was a long time ago, that all magic on earth is believed to be from jinns and ifrits. And that's a super interesting idea to me. Whilst I don't think it's great that you could sell your sanity for help with a few bits around the house, even then, are you really getting what you wish for properly with this monster, rather than with a djinn? How could you tell them apart when they can turn into anything and have the same powers? Who knows? It seems untrustworthy to me. But I think this one might be a no for me. I think it's a bit fantastical, and I just have the idea of Robin Williams' Aladdin genie in my head. Whenever I think of the djinn, it's terrible, but that is where my head goes. And whilst the idea of demons is something I don't believe in through my religion and upbringing, some people, and especially in Islam, might believe that seems super feasible. So it's all subjective, really, and it gets a bit tricky with religious folklore, as always. Nonetheless... I love this type of monster, and I'm glad to have been able to cover both the benevolent type and the malevolent type with the Jinn and Ifrit, as well as many more of these religious folklore monsters to come, such as these. But what do you think? Did the Ifrit do mortals on Earth? Let me know on Twitter, I would love to know what you think about this one. I love covering these types of religious monsters. Otherwise, I truly would know nothing about them. It's super interesting. And I'm really, really hoping that you enjoyed learning about this one as much as I did. But for next week, we are heading over to the US for what seems like a new urban legend, but it's actually been around since the 1950s. And I love covering an urban legend, so I'm very excited for this one. We are going to be summoning the Hook or the Hook Man next week. So I hope you're not listening to this in your car at Makeout Peak next Thursday. I would actually actively avoid doing that, please. That would be great. I don't want to get a lawsuit or anything. For now, though, thank you so much for listening. It's been an absolute pleasure. If you enjoyed this podcast, please give it a rating on the service you are listening on. And I've got the Twitter for any questions or suggestions on what monsters to cover next. And I'd really love to hear from you. The social media handles for TikTok, YouTube, Threads and Instagram are Myth Monsters Podcast and the Twitter is Myth Monsters Pod but all of our content can be found at mythmonsters.co.uk including some very cool merchandise. And you can find us on Good Pods, Buy Me A Coffee and Patreon if you want to help me fund the podcast too. Come join the fun though. Share this with your pals. They might love me as much as you do. But for now... Stay spooky. And I'll see you later, babes. <laughs>